So in this video, we're looking at 2.6 enzymes. So in order to talk about enzymes, we have to talk about a few introductory matters first. Let's do that. So chemical reactions. Uh, we've talked about chemical reactions, interactions between chemicals that cause the chemicals to change. And um, we also talk, talked a little bit about how chemical reactions require energy to work. And you can see this here in this picture. There's energy going into the reaction. And then you have the products on the outside. You have the products that are being made. Some, some reactions require a lot more energy than others, depending on the kind of reaction it is. That energy that is necessary to begin a reaction is called the activation energy. Activation energy can be high or low, depending on the type of reaction that is being made. Uh, there are some reactions that will end with more energy at the end like the products will have more energy than the reactants and these reactions are called endothermic reactions because they have more energy at the end of the reaction than they did at the beginning an exothermic reaction is going to be a reaction that um, has less energy at the end and so you can see the activation energy on each of these is different as well one of them is going to require more energy than the other but they still both require some amount of activation energy which brings us to the next idea if you could lower that activation energy then you could speed up this sp the reaction you can see that x-axis has to do with the reaction coordinates based on the progress of the reaction so if you could somehow shorten that then you could speed up the reaction that's what a catalyst does a catalyst is something that speeds up chemical reaction by lowering its activation energy they work by doing just that. They increase the speed of the reaction. They increase the efficiency of the reaction. So you can kind of see in this picture that um, that blue line represents a reaction with the activation energy that's higher. And the man recognized you had to go uphill and downhill, that sort of thing. Whereas the lower line, the purpley looking line, is with a catalyst. And it takes less activation energy. In our bodies, we have catalysts. They're called enzymes. Enzymes are biological catalysts. Typically, they are proteins, which is why this picture is there. You can see the three-dimensional structure of that protein, and we've talked about how protein shape determine their function. And this is an exactly this is exactly a, an idea of that. And they speed up biological reactions, conserving energy and time in those reactions, which is going to further life. Most enzymes end in the suffix ase, and we're going to talk about like salivary amylase is an example of an enzyme that is in your saliva that breaks down the bonds of starch. We're going to do a li uh, lab with an enzyme called catalase, which breaks down hydrogen peroxide. There are lots of examples. That's just a couple. So let's talk about this thing called the enzyme substrate complex. Anytime you see that word complex in biology, it's dealing with lots of different things. This is the enzyme substrate complex because the two things it's dealing with are the enzyme and the substrate. And there's that active site too. Let's talk about it. Of course, we just talked about the enzyme. It's a biological catalyst. The substrate is the reactant in an enzyme reaction. It is the molecule that is being changed by the enzyme. And the active site is where the substrate binds to the enzyme. So all these things together, enzyme substrate complex. The Again, the substrate binds to the enzyme. The enzyme is like a tool, just like when you have a wrench. That wrench binds to the bolt that you are trying to loosen, and when you lift up the wrench the bolt has been changed it's been tightened or loosened and the wrench is unchanged it can go do another job and so very similar the substrate is being changed as a result of this the enzyme is able then to go and do more work whatever that work is so let's look at some examples of enzyme reactions so here's an example of an enzyme reaction you start with some sort of substrate it's sucrose in this case and sucrose is a um, polysaccharide with two, two uh, monosaccharides, and it's going to join to the active site of that enzyme. That enzyme then is going to break that sucrose apart into its individual pieces, fructose and glucose. Of course, it's going to need water to do that. Remember hydrolysis, breaking, mon breaking polymers apart into monomers. Right, And so this is one example of something an enzyme can do. But not only can it break molecules apart, it can join them together. So here you have a red thing and a yellow thing. They don't have names like the other ones did, but we can pretend. And there's the active site down there. Red and yellow bind to the active site, and they make an orange ball. And so the orange ball is different than red and yellow, right? 
it's completely changed. The substrate has been changed into a product. The enzyme is free to go off and join other red and yellows at this time. So let's talk a little bit about enzyme regulation. Now there's, we're going to talk about um, just a few ways that enzyme can be regulated. There are lots more than the few that we're going to talk about. But um, the body is always trying to regulate enzyme uh, function because maybe it doesn't need it or it's, uh, you know, it doesn't need to make more because enzymes cost energy to make. And so one of the ways that the body regulates enzyme function is just by regulating the amount of substrate. And what does that mean? Well, it could be that you just don't have a lot of substrate. Maybe you haven't come in contact with a particular substrate, and so you don't need the enzyme in order to, uh, to break that substrate down. And so substrate concentration is going to directly affect the uh, rate of reaction of enzymes because if there's no substrate, it's not doing anything. If there's a lot of substrate, it's able to do something. And we talked about this in the last video. You can see that my uh, face is just in the way a little bit here. Can I move it out of the way? I can do that. Okay. And so um, in this picture, you can see the enzyme substrate complex there on the left. And uh, the substrate's able to bind to it because the shape of the enzyme determines its function. And it has a perfect fit there. But if you were to denature that protein, say through heat, pH, low pH, high pH, then that would change the way that shape worked and then the substrate would no longer be able to bind. This is going to significantly slow down this reaction. Um, this is essentially what happens when you're cooking. You, you change the shape of the protein of the food and it causes them to denature, changes the whole makeup of that, that thing, right? And so uh, if, this, if the substrate or if the enzyme is damaged, the substrate will no longer be able to function. Enzymes can be damaged with heat. Like we said, this is what happens with a fever. Uh, fever is breaks down enzymes for the things that are inside of us that shouldn't be, and so it kills those things. Uh, pH can also change this. This is why the pH of our blood, which is around 7.4, is so necessary to be within that tight range because the enzymes in our blood will just stop working if it gets higher or lower. It's not, it's not good. And so, uh, again, shape determines function in two ways to, enzyme, to regulate enzyme function, not only substrate concentration, but just simply by denaturing the protein.